Cheers. So uh, after winning a, a prize for best tiddler, which is smallest uh, smallest motorcycle at the virtual Rat and Survival um, custom show uh, this year, um, virtual show because of course we're in the middle of the Corona shutdown and all public events are um, are cancelled. Um, so as a result of that, I'm doing a bit of a, a show and tell about the actual bike itself. Um, it's based on a, a mini moto that I bought many years ago with the intention of making it work again. Of course, a scrap mini moto, making it work again and taking it to rallies and, and shows and, and having a good blast on a little two stroke. But of course, uh, like a lot of projects, it just stayed in the attic for quite a long time um, until recently I started messing around with uh, electric bicycles and hoverboards and, and a few other things and built this. Uh, initially to take it to a technology festival um, to show off electric personal transportations um, uh, and then since then I've taken it to several um, uh, motorbike shows as well as a post-apocalyptic show and it goes down really well. Um, I think there's a whole thing about uh, electric uh, things like this on campsites that just doesn't annoy people. But anyway, back to the show and tell. It's a uh, it's a mini moto. I did have the bodywork for it. it. had a nice racing bodywork, but uh, I strapped it down to a trailer unwisely and broke it. So now I've just got a bit of foam on the seat. Um, and, and a bit of a bare, a bare thing to it. So it doesn't have much of a stand, so it's going to fall over in a minute. Um, so the first, Uh, the first thing to say is it's made on hoverboard wheels. Um, so, there's my hand for scale, give you an idea of how big it is. Um, uh, the hoverboard wheel has had the tyre taken off and it's this inner part here. And quite luckily I've managed to put this wheel together without uh, welding. Uh, I mean, I do have a TIG welder these days, so I would have simply TIG welded it on the, on the joints. Whereas this is held together by the two halves of the hoverboard wheel because it's held together with these uh, six uh, six screws, and that kind of just pinches it all up, and it just happened to fit the, the width of the um, the mini moto wheel. Um, so that's basically how I got the wheels to to mesh up to each other. It is it is 
two or three, maybe four inches uh, larger in diameter than the hoverboard wheel, so you do get a little bit of extra speed, uh, not a huge amount, um, but I'll, I'll come to that probably a bit later on if I remember. Um, hoverboard wheels are normally um, held on with one axle uh, on one side with a, with a clamp, which I've reproduced here on the bottom of the fork. But of course the thin spindly fork leg um, can't take a side thrust uh, like that. So what I did was take the hoverboard motor apart. Uh, and then, I don't know if this is going to show up, but there's a bit of 10mm studding going in. And that threads into the back of this, this half shaft. Um, because the back half is free to drill into. Obviously this side has the, uh, the cable going to it. And then this side sort of bolts on in a traditional manner. And then I've repeated that on, on the rear, on the rear motor. So uh, that means the smart ones amongst you will be saying, well, isn't that two wheel drive? And of course, if I can hold this and do it at the same time, yes it is. So we have the rear wheel spinning and the front wheel spinning. I'll do an obligatory uh, wheel spin on that in a minute. Um, it's what all the e-bike people do. They spin it in the, in the dirt, anything will spin. Um, so after getting the, the wheels fitted, um, it's then to wire it up. And, and there's quite a bunch of wires come out of a three-phase motor. You have the, obviously the three heavier power wires. And in this case, they're yellow, green and blue. And then there's five... Um, five pickup wires which which measure the the position of the the motor for, for the controller to um, be able to operate it um, as for the controller there's there's a circuit board in here it does look like it's in there for fun uh, but it's not and if I can get to my bag Oh, that was planned well. So, the control board is is here, and although there's a lot of rat bikes out there with random circuit boards fitted to them, this one is for real. So this is one I brought along just to demo. I didn't bring any motors or hoverboards along because they're quite heavy and uh, to stick in a backpack. Um, so this this control board um, is actually powering both motors. It's the original one out of the hoverboard, so you get it free with your hoverboard. Um, and by itself it's it's pretty damn useless however there's some really keen guys or certainly one individual in particular um, a guy called Nicholas Nicholas Firth I'll put a link on, on the end of the video who, who worked out reverse engineered the circuit um, worked out what it was doing then wrote some software so as you you, you wipe off the hoverboard um, software program and then reflash it using a, a little programmer that you can get off eBay from China for about £2.50 and then you can use this program which is put up for free on the internet to then connect it to whatever you want and in this case I've connected it to a, a standard electric bicycle um, twist grip and there was um, I think I had to put some level shift resistors in and then of course I had to alter the code so as it would go from naught to um, to full speed on what on the voltage that comes out of the twist grip and then on this particular mini moto quite conveniently it uh it's not going to portrait mode it fits really well between the um the chassis parts and i've got a bit of perspex on the top a bit underneath um just to show it off a bit um a little ebay uh voltmeter so i can see when it's uh see what the voltage is doing and then the actual full voltage and empty voltage full of 42 volts empty 31 and of course under power the voltage droops droops a bit low um, I originally ran it from the original hoverboard um, hoverboard battery which I put in you know str strung it up under a bit of uh, inner tube rubber up under the seat um, but because both wheels uh, with the larger tires going at once continuously 
Uh, bearing in mind the original hoverboard only keeps you balanced upright and, and this would be continuously going for whole minutes at a time. Um, uh, it was a bit much for the small battery so I've got a little electric bike battery there that um, for, for an electric bike it's a bit old and tired but for this it's just perfect. Uh, today I'm going to do about five miles, I've done about two and a half here to this nice picturesque area so I'm not doing it in my kitchen um, and, and another couple and, a, couple and a half miles home again. Um, and, and that's about it, that, that's all the technical points to it really. Um, flashing the, the circuit board with the new firmware, that, that's a bit technical. You have to get in there and do, do a bit of coding. It uses the, I'm pretty certain it used the Arduino environment. So if you're into your, your micros, that, that'll be a word you'll, you'll um, recognise. Um, I built this about two years ago now and I've taken it to half a dozen festivals. It's got rained on, it's got wet, not hugely wet but it has been rained on um, and uh, I did take it for a spin around the town centre the other day in, in, the, in the first first few days of the um, lockdown when there was absolutely nobody out went through the town centre which was quite good but I forgot to take a camera with me so I've got no action cam of that um, so uh, um, I'm going to do uh, put the camera on a stand and then do a, the obligatory double wheel burnout and then um, and then call it quits. I don't think there's anything else to say. There we go. Obligatory burnout. Um, oh, so, yeah. Uh, apart from the fact that it's a scrap hoverboard, so you can pick a scrap hoverboard up from anything from uh, I've bought them from ten pounds average scrap hoverboards about thirty quid. Um, and and upwards people ask ridiculous money for broken ones but if you do ever buy a broken one you get two motors and you also get um a four hour a four amp hour 36 volt battery um and it's interesting that most e-bikes have only an eight amp hour battery at, at 36 volts and so, so with your your layout if it's got a good battery of, of 30 quid gets you two motors and a battery um um any other technical points yes it has regenerative braking uh, on the pull-up video when i pulled up in front earlier on um, and stopped in front of the camera i was braking on the uh, regenerative braking that puts the power back into the battery um, going around the bike there is no brakes uh, it does about 22 mile an hour flat out um, and you can easily slow down to about three or four mile an hour just on the regen braking, then put your feet down. It really doesn't need brakes at all uh, in, in the mechanical sense. Uh, and the other point that's probably worth mentioning um, is you can run these motors from a standard uh, 350 watt uh, electric bike uh, controller that you can buy off eBay from China for about 10 or 12 quid. Um, and, and you can plug these motors straight into them and they just work. You get, um, you may or may not get regenerative braking, um, um, but it's certainly a way to make the motors work if you're not technically minded as, as, as I am. Um, uh, so yeah, um, I've not done the overall specs, have I? Um, I can pick up and carry it. I've taken it on the train. Um, I've driven it on pavements. Uh, whether or not I'll include the run here where people are politely getting out even though i stop people politely get out of the way and smile and look at it it doesn't bring that small motorbike rage that the two-stroke bikes bring out um top speed's about 22 mile an hour from what i remember um uh this i had a, I had a different uh e-bike battery on it just a slightly longer one strapped on the back and i went out and range tested it and did about 10 to 15 miles on the canal banks around newport in the dark under the power of stealth <laughs> it was just it was quite good fun um not much more to say speed range weight i can carry it great fun charges up in a couple of hours uh yeah superb little festival bike there was one other thing is um, the clever guys that wrote the firmware for this. 
um, so I'll put the link up for included a mode of motor operation I've, I've not mentioned um, and it's a bit tricky to, to do because I've got to have the wheel spinning but the wheels have their maximum speed which is set by the oh, a whole bunch of stuff but basically limited by the voltage of the battery and the controller and, and a few other things but there's a technique called field weakening and what these guys have done I hook it up on my foot is they've introduced field weakening and I have it on this this button here so um, whether or not it's going to show up on camera I really don't know but if I bring the motors up to speed well that's the twist grip as far as it goes motors on maximum speed limited by the battery and then you engage um, field weakening it's a bit like a, a bit like turbo boost or whatever they call it in um, Knight Rider and that really does um, move you along a bit so that's just pushing the button and the reason I don't have that activated all the time is because it sets up a I don't want to be getting nerdy it sets up a a second rotating magnetic field within the motor um, that opposes the um, the opposes the permanent magnets to weaken the field of them which allows the motor to go faster which for reasons I'm not going to try and explain now um, but because it's generating a second magnetic field it uses more power and because it's reducing the effective magnetic field coming off the magnets um, it's not as powerful so um, if you want to win a race and, and get the last um, the last few seconds shaved off your time then yeah it's got a place but uh, I use that just for every now and again uh, but yeah that's it the uh, the electric uh, bicycle